Alrighty, welcome back to this Christmas episode of Cortoberfest Weekly. I'm John Corto, reporting from the basement. So I'm going to try to keep it pretty brief uh, today because it is the holiday and um, there'd be stuff to do. Uh, but I do have a couple of really good movie reviews for you, and uh, we'll end with a lightning round of my essentials for uh, Christmas movies that I try to watch every year. So, uh, first, a couple of these two movies I'm going to review, um, both came out this year, and surprisingly very good. The first one I'll talk about is Spirited, which I wasn't all that I wasn't all that jazzed about seeing this is on apple tv plus this is with will ferrell and um ryan reynolds will ferrell and ryan reynolds and it's actually a really really cute take on a christmas carol it does some really really good world building around how the spirits that the spirits that go out to Say to redeem the miserly characters, they sort of have an organization. The basic concept is there's this organization um, in the afterlife that um, sends out the spirits to the miserly characters and, and redeems them. And Will Ferrell is playing Christmas Ghost of Christmas Present, and there's a good, really good twist on that that I won't give away. And they track down people who need to be visited by spirits and they have a whole operation to bring them from point A to point B. So the world building on that is really good and they meet they come across Ryan Reynolds who falls into this category of unredeemable where everyone you know every all of the other spirits say he's not like this is not he's not worth looking at don't will Fer- will Farrell don't don't bother and for a personal reason that um is explored later in the movie which again works into the twist um will Farrell thing it firmly believes this is the guy we have to redeem this guy that even the spirits say can't be can't be redeemed and it is a musical. It's got some fun musical numbers in it, and they treat it like a. They treat it like a. They treat it like a musical. It's not, you know. It's, you know, it's not. They, the, what what's the words I'm looking for? Um, it's staged very well. They they fully em, they embrace they embrace the musical as a as as an art form and play fully into it. Whereas. I feel like some movies are a little dodgy about, well, we're a musical, isn't that kind of lame? They don't really do that. They just go full hog with it, and it works really well. Uh, Will Ferrell is great. This has my preferred version of Will Ferrell, which is a little bit toned back from his normal wacky uh, persona. It's closer to sort of Stranger Than, fi- Stranger Than Fiction Will Ferrell, where he's, he's a little pulled back and a little bit more nu- nuanced, and he has, he has it in him to do real honest-to-goodness good acting uh, when he's not yelling. And Yelly Will Ferrell is, is great, depending on what you're looking for for comedy on a particular night, but I, on a personal level, I prefer the toned-back version of him, and he does... He's very good in this movie, and Ryan Reynolds is Ryan Reynolds. And I, I think the good thing about Ryan Reynolds is that uh, the character that he plays is very entertaining and engaging and quite funny. Not really stretching himself in regards to personality, but he's very good, and they actually both sing quite well. i got to give them, they both have decent voices. They're not going to be doing an opera anytime soon, but but they're good. My one complaint about this movie is that it's like two hours and six minutes, and this is a little bit of a riff on what we talked about last week of movies being too long. This film really should have been closer to an hour 50. I overstayed its welcome by about 15 to 20 minutes, and that's that's really my one complaint. And I also wish the songs were a little bit more memorable, but they're they're fun enough that I was really engaged, and I was I was surprised I liked this movie this much. It's it's get definitely gets a, a recommend. Uh, and Octavia Spencer, great singer. I don't know that she's ever been in a, another musical before, but she was really really very good in this in this movie. So I would if you've got Apple TV Plus, I would 
give Spirited a full-on recommend. It's, it's, it's worth your time. The other new movie I saw over, over the Christmas break has been A Christmas Story Christmas, which I am shocked and amazed is, is very, very good. When they first announced this, when they first announced they were making a sequel to A Christmas Story, I was a little apoplectic about it because you read that and the, the original film is, is one of the perfect Christmas movies of all time. And it's like, how could they do this? The first one was perfect. There, there's no need. There's nowhere to go but down. And then on top of it, you've got all the political stuff. How can, how are they going to take a Christmas story and wokeify it and, and lecture us? And they don't do it. They actually, on both fronts, is, is it better than the original Christmas story? No. But it's very, very good. It's almost like they went about it uh, trying to make a tribute to the first film than trying to surpass it or anything. They really did a nice job with the story. And on the second front, they don't, u- they don't use it. They just tell a story. They don't use it to bash you in the head with any current day issues. It's just a very, very endearing story. And while the original film was about sort of the joys of Christmas from a child's perspective, this one is more about Ralphie as an adult making Christmas happen for your children and the challenges that goes on with that. And feeding into that is in, and this is in the trailer, so it's not really a spoiler. The old man has died and coping with the loss of a parent and really realizing all that go all that that parent went through to make your Christmases nice as a child and it's really really endearing the setting the setting is great at this one the original was in the 50s it's been shuttled up to the 70s uh, to right around where Peter Billingsley is now and you know, my, my parents grew up in the 70s. We were watching this, this movie with my mom, and she was pointing out, oh, yep, that's, that's spot on, that's spot on. So clearly they were paying a lot of attention to the production design and getting the time period correct, which, was, which is really cool. That takes, that's, you know, you know, production design is really, really hard, and attention to detail is important, and they clearly had somebody on it getting the time period correct. Um, and it's an hour and 38 minutes, which was beautiful. Like the more, the older I get, the more I, the more I love an hour, an hour and a half to an hour and 45. It's the ideal, ideal runtime as an adult. Um, but it's a very solid, very, really, really solid movie. Uh, they used all of they used all of the original actors in great ways. Uh, Peter Billingsley remembers how to play. He remembers who Ralphie is. Like it's clearly the same character. They haven't changed him in any in any stupid ways. It feels like the adult. It, it feels like the kid we knew grown up, and it's it's brilliant. So absolutely a hundred percent watch this movie. It is it is worth your time. I will say my favorite my favorite. Uh, return on an old character, how they bring Farkas, the bully, in at the end is very, very endearing and well done. And, and yeah, I can't, I, I'm, I'm shocked and I'm glad to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong about this movie. It's not bad. It's actually very, very good and it's worth your time. All right. So that brings us to my lightning round on five essential movies for Christmas. And the first one, of course, is Die Hard. It is a Christmas movie. Uh, he gets invited to the Christmas party. It ends with Let It Snow. Um, you know, you've got the, the packing, the, the Christmas packing tape at the very end. And of course, now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. It's... So it is. It is a. It is a Christmas movie. It's one of the most. It's probably the greatest action movie of all time. Everything about it is perfect, from how it's shot to how it's cut. The characters, top to bottom, are all fleshed out and dynamic. Um, so if you haven't, I, I've met, I've run into like several people recently who haven't seen Die Hard, and it's like, where, how, get out of my country? Uh, if you have, you're not allowed to be. <laughs> like you, you if. Um, 
you're not allowed to be an American if you haven't seen Die Hard. Of course, that's those are all it's all jokes, um, but um, um, it's essential. It's essential watch. It's a, even if you're not so into action movies, it's you need to watch it. And I I I, I cry a little inside when people say they haven't seen Die Hard. Um, and what, like, one random note I want to, I, I'll bring up, and I was thinking about this a little bit, I don't, I don't know how this came up, but even, we all, we all sort of hate Ellis, he's the smart me business dude, ultimately ends up, uh, uh, Hans wastes him later in the movie, and, and we all kind of like Hans for that, but if you really look at it, um, like, you can argue that that there is some kernel of a soul in Ellis because if he really if he really wanted to if like if 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 he really wanted to um get John McClane off the board he could have just turned he could have just turned Holly in which I guess I guess you can argue that um you can argue he just wants to get in into Holly's pants and that's why he wants her to stay alive but uh, I don't think I'm at that point when he just doesn't want to die. I don't think he's thinking about that. I think do think there's a legitimate part of him that, you know, he doesn't turn her in because he knows he knows it might be bad. It's it might not might be it will be bad for her. And so there, there's 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 a kernel of, of, of good person in in him there when he, he makes a conscious decision not to do the obvious and goes out of his way not to tell the terrorists who she is. So, an inter- interesting thought about that character that I was having recently, but that was number five is Die Hard. Coming at number four, it number four was a tough one. It was between it was between Home Alone and the Santa Claus. I have to end close runner up. Usually, I, I start how I start my Christmas movie marathons every year is with. Um, I call it the Die Home Alone Marathon. It's Die Hard and Home Alone. And that's two two movies about an ever an, an an everyday your average Joe protecting his family from outside forces and that's sort it's a fun double feature that that you should that you should do and you got Die Hard is 2 hours. Uh, I want to say Home Alone's probably like an hour 45, so it's it's a reasonable double feature, but the one I will fully put in, Home Alone doesn't have quite the nostalgia element for me personally as the Santa Claus. So Santa Claus, the Santa Claus comes in at number four. I saw that when I was in like second grade, and it's always been a staple. I think Tim Allen, Tim Allen has a great arc in there, and he's for me he's the best. For me, Tim Allen is still the best on-screen Santa Claus, and it's got. Um, the scenes in the North Pole are great. They really flesh out, flesh out Santa's world very well. Uh, it's there's a little bit of morbid, morbidness to it, and the fact that Tim Allen accidentally kills Santa Claus, which you don't really appreciate as a kid, but as an adult, it's like, well, that's that, that's a little twisted. So number four would be the Santa Claus. Great movie. Check it out. Coming in at number three would be White Christmas going back to musicals it's just a great old musical bring Bing Crosby Danny Kay and what I kind of love about it is that the music has no the music figures into the plot not at all it's there just to be there and that's kind of great I mean would wouldn't it be better if if we could hash out our problems by just singing in random times it would it would be awesome but you've got two great performances with uh, Bing Crosby and Danny Kay and essentially I, I think why I like it so much there's the World War II aspect they're doing something they come on their friend who come they come they come come upon their friend uh, their old general who's on hard times and it's basically just it's about two guys doing something nice for for somebody important to them who's having a hard time and it's sort of a nice message and there's a lot of really really good moments in it my personal favorite when the general gets in 
he puts on they've sort of conned it so that um he has to wear his, his army uniform to this show they're putting on. And when he comes down the stairs and sort of the adoration that his granddaughter looks on him when when he comes on, comes out in uniform is really, really very sweet. Um, so that that is a favorite. I will I will note the the sort of conflict at the end is a little stupid. Uh, basically, it boils down to Rosemary Clooney thinks Bing Crosby is doing this unethical thing, and rather than just ask him, she gives them the "you know what you did" treatment. And ladies, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. You gotta just be direct. And if she was just direct with him, it would be, "Hey, Bing, are you? I heard you're doing this. Are you doing that?" And Bing would be, "No. What are you talking about? That's ridiculous." No conflict at the end of the movie, so it's a little it's a little forced, but the whole point of it is the music and the dancing, and that sort of makes up for any silliness in the plot. So, very very great movie. Number two is for me would be the Christmas Story, a Christmas Story, going back to the sequel that just came out. A Christmas Story is another perfect movie about. Christmas through the eyes of a child and all of the things you run into growing up with your friends uh, the things you want for Christmas and I always let the, the parents you don't really realize how much the parents are the are the unsung heroes of of the film when you're a kid when you're an adult just whether it's there's that great line where um, they're putting out dinner and the mother the voiceover is um uh, something along the lines of my mother hadn't had a had a a warm meal in 15 years and it just sort of goes it's it's hilarious but also it goes to it goes to how much how hard mothers work bringing up kids and then i also love at the very end when it that it's the dad that gets him the the bb gun and it's sort of this as, as a grown man, he, he knew what it was like to be a young boy, and he knows what he wants, and it's like, it's fine. He's, he's going to be fine for all that that everyone else is like, he'll shoot your eye out. You know, you know the dad is like, this is like, I had one. It's it's like, he's he's a little boy. Let him, let him do what he's going to, let him, let him have some fun. Like, he'll be, he'll be okay. We'll guide him through it. And it was a nice little moment, and the old man is depicted as sort of this uh, curmudgeon throughout the whole thing, and there's that little moment of, like, nah, he's he's got, there. there's a, a really warm heart in that rough exterior, and I, I really love that moment. And final, last, last one, number one, is The Muppet Christmas Carol. This is the best version of A Christmas Carol, of all the many versions of A Christmas Carol, that are out there you'll never find a better bob cratchit than than kermit the frog and i will fight anyone who who suggests otherwise but it takes it takes it takes dickens story and adds all of that muppety goodness it really it does it adapts it very well it trims it trims out some of the harsher stuff like it doesn't really get into his sister and it doesn't have the i think it's like ignorance and and want that um, that look like the really creepy aspects of the story. It sort of you know slices slices off to um, be a little better for kid audiences, but it doesn't lose the main. It it does it without losing the main thread of what the story is actually about. And what makes it work is that Michael Caine takes it so seriously. Like he just plays Scrooge. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't act like he's around Muppets. He just plays the part, and he's the bit. He's he's my favorite Scrooge that I've seen on on, you know, in film or television. And because he takes it so seriously, it makes the comedy punch, but also it brings some genuine emotion to the story as it goes goes from start to finish. And then the soundtrack is just is just great. Um. Um. Great, there's just great track after great track, and and one more sleep till Christmas is maybe one of my favorite uh, musical scenes in a film. You know, full stop. 
but um, the I mean interest and interesting thing on on that I um, the fact that they cut when love is gone out of it was a surprise I didn't it's sort of an interesting thing about my generation most of us fig- found that movie on VHS tape not in the theater it didn't really do well in the theater and in the theatrical version they cut that song and for the tape they I, for whatever reason decided to put it back in so most of us came up with that movie with that song in it so when they released it on DVD and it wasn't there it's like what the what the heck happened and so we all kind of found out later oh they cut they cut that song and it doesn't really kind of it doesn't really make sense that they cut it just from an editorial perspective you look at scrooge scrooge's emotions and in the theatrical cut he's from like one to a hundred in like in in a cut and it doesn't have the sort of lead up and builds to the full-on regret that he has at the end of the musical number and then also you kind of need that there to circle back to the love we found at the end of the film so I, I don't, it's a bummer they cut it, and I guess it was one of those they thought it was slow and boring, and the kids won't. The kids will be bored, but I, I, I wasn't bored. I wasn't bored as a kid. It was, it was, you know, again, one of my, my favorite movie, Christmas movie of all time. So top, top five, top five for me, Die Hard, The Santa Claus, White Christmas, A Christmas Story, and The Muppet Christmas Carol. And that is, those are my... Those are my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, eh. There we go. My computer's act, laptop is being difficult. But so I'll wrap it up. I hope everyone is having a merry Christmas. This is this was a little little bit of a rough uh, a rough episode because I didn't plan it out at all. I just set up a microphone and just went. But um, definitely check out Spirited. A hundred percent watch a christmas story christmas and check out any of those um check out any of the five that i i mentioned uh earlier and we'll be back next week with i'll i'll be reviewing glass onion and we'll talk a little bit about 2022 in film i think this was not a great year for movies i will get a get more into it next week but uh, not not the best. I, I do think 2023. I'm bullish on 2023. I've already seen some good trailers that that have got me looking forward to spending next year in the movies. So have a great Christmas and I'll see you next week.